All right, this is Allie Short with Katie Short, and I'm making my first review video for YouTube on research methods, focusing specifically on correlational research and correlation coefficients. The goal of correlational research is to identify relationships between factors. However, it is very important to understand that these factors do not necessarily have a causal relationship. It is just saying that there is, in fact, a relationship between these things, which we represent with the correlational coefficient which is represented by the letter R. The correlation coefficient can range in number from negative one all the way up to positive one. The strength of the relationship or the magnitude of the relationship is represented by how far that number is away from zero with one or negative one showing the highest strength of the relationship or the highest magnitude. The direction of the relationship represented by either being positive or negative implies whether or not they are increasing together, decreasing together, or moving in the opposite direction, meaning one is increasing while the other is decreasing. If it is positive, it means that it can be increasing together or decreasing together, and the negative sign indicates that they are moving in that opposite way. So that means that there is, in fact, an inverse relationship. So let's take a look at some correlation coefficient numbers. If the number is one, that means that there is a perfect relationship. The two factors always occur together. You are essentially making if and then statements. If you're looking for something that has a strong relationship, you are looking at being closer to that one or that negative one. If you're looking for a weak relationship, but there is some correlation between them, you're looking for a number that is close to zero. A correlation coefficient of zero means that there is no relationship between these two factors and there's no statistical significance. So let's take a look at four scatter plots, which is one of the most common ways to represent correlation. In this first one that we see in the top left-hand corner of the screen, there is a correlation between the length of lecture and the number of yawns. And this is a positive relationship. And the reason you can tell that it is a positive relationship is that when the length of the lecture increases, the number of yawns will also be increasing and moving the same direction. If you were to reverse this in a word problem, they may talk about a shorter lecture, which would be the length of the lecture decreasing, and then the number of yawns would be decreasing as well, and therefore moving in the same direction, which means it would have a positive correlation coefficient as opposed to a negative one. Below that, there is another example of positive correlation, this time with hours of studying, and test grade. Once again, you can reverse it. The fewer hours that you study, the lower the test grade. So decreasing, decreasing, or increasing, increasing, this is what makes a positive correlation. The top right-hand corner, you'll notice a negative correlation. This is with the length of lecture and the attentiveness of students. So the longer this video is, the less attentive maybe that you would be. And so this is one increasing, that is the length of the lecture that is increasing. And then the attentiveness of students is decreasing. They are moving in opposite directions. Therefore, we have a negative correlation because there is an inverse relationship. You will see the same type of relationship below this, where we have one other scatter plot showing the number of parties attended. And then it's showing your test grade then decreasing. So the number of parties, that is increasing. Your test grade is decreasing. Once again, we are moving in opposite directions, an inverse relationship, which means that there is a negative correlation, and you would be representing this with a negative correlation coefficient. So we looked at scatter plots, but there's a very good chance that on the AP exam, you will not be shown a scatter plot. You will be given a word problem or example. And so we described it for these scenarios in the previous slide, but just make sure that you're keeping in mind positive means that they are moving in the same direction. So if they're increasing, they are both increasing, or if they're decreasing, the other factor is decreasing in the example. And for negative correlations, they are moving in opposite directions. So if one factor is increasing, the other factor is decreasing. And if that first factor is decreasing, then the other one is increasing. So hopefully I've made it pretty clear that correlation does not equal causation, but that doesn't mean that correlation isn't useful. And so certainly it can be a predictor of causal relationships, that maybe it would be unethical to study. 
In addition to that, it can be used to predict certain factors. For example, universities use SAT scores and GPA to predict how well someone will in fact do in college, which can be very useful for them when they're trying to pick who they're going to admit. One of the major problems with a correlation study is a third variable problem. And basically what this is, is this is a circumstance where a variable that has not been measured accounts for the relationship between two other variables. Uh, sometimes these things are known as confounds. Uh, the example in the book may be heat because they're talking about those ice cream sales and that violent crime, and they both increase every single year at the same time, so they're obviously linked. However, chances are it is not ice cream sales or violent crime causing the increase in the other. Some people may not want to consider a third variable problem or a confound because the research may be supporting something that they wanted to say with a correlation. So you need to be careful whenever you hear those words association or relationship. Chances are it doesn't show a causal relationship if you're seeing that in the press. However, if you are seeing it on the AP Psych exam, chances are they are asking about correlation and not causation and make sure that you get it right on the test. Longitudinal design is also another component to correlation research. And according to our textbook, longitudinal design is a special kind of systematic observation used by correlation researchers that involves obtaining measures of the variables of interest in multiple waves over time. And the Nunn study conducted by David Snowden is one of these famous studies, which we will talk about in class.